The next world-changing companies are often found in small caps. No, not small cap letters, but stocks valued under $2 billion. Today, we're looking at three unique small cap companies that you may never have heard of, but you should definitely consider. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Dollars and Cents, helping you make sense of making dollars. Now, if you look at my channel, you notice I don't usually talk about small caps, and that's because of the risks associated with them. I've only really ever talked about two, The Daily Journal and Bed Bath & Beyond. Small cap businesses are, well, small businesses. Their market caps range between $300 million and $2 billion. If one thing goes wrong, it could destroy the entire company. Look at Zymergen, a biopharma company that failed a clinical trial. The company lost 70% of its value and has never recovered. Another small cap company that faced a similar fate was Pier 1 Imports, and due to bad leadership, the furnishing and home decor company is no longer around, and its investors lost 94% from its all-time highs. All this is to say that small caps are risky. Of course, that doesn't mean investors should avoid small caps, it's just important to understand the risks of these companies and what could happen to them. With that said, today I'm venturing slightly out of my comfort zone and looking at three small cap companies that could have a real future. First up is Curiosity Stream, a streaming service with a lot to prove. This platform offers documentary style programming and boasts over 3,500 titles and more than 20 million subscribers. In the last two years, it's grown revenue by 160 percent on average, and the service itself is surprisingly cheap at just $20 a year, making it one of the cheapest streaming sites out there. But you know what's even cheaper? Hitting that subscribe button to keep up with the best investing content on YouTube. More interesting yet, John Hendricks was the founder of Curiosity Stream in 2015. If you don't know who that is, you might know him by his other streaming service that he founded, Discovery. As one of the co-founders of Curiosity Stream, Hendricks serves as chairman of the board, and brought just a few other Discovery alumni with with him. CEO Clint Stinchcomb, CFO Jason Eustace, and COO Tia Kudahe, just to name a few. With this formidable board of directors, CuriosityStream has made some pretty incredible deals, such as the acquisitions of individual content like the ZDF documentaries, to companies like One Day University, and a small stake in Nebula. This latter company is a creator-owned streaming service with over 140 creators and a combined 120 million subscribers on YouTube. Right Right now, Curiosity holds a minority ownership in Nebula, but the deal lets its subscribers have access to Nebula for free. Despite all these incredible deals, Curiosity Stream has fallen more than 85% over the last few months because of some disappointing earnings calls and a relatively bearish market overall. Really, not much has fundamentally changed about the company despite that. Management is still as positive as before about growth and the company's direction overall. One of the other ideas that I've held about Curiosity Stream is that it's a prime acquisition target, maybe even by Discovery after its merger with Warner Media. But we'll just have to see how things play out. The second small cap on our list is Transmedics. This company solves a critical, long-time problem in the world of medicine, transporting donor organs over long distances. Yes, yes, there are medical transports for organs called static cold storage. It's the classic transporting an organ in a box method. Using this method yields only two to three out of every 10 thoracic organs that can actually be used. And even those have high post-transplant complications. What does that mean? Well, 70 to 80% of all donated organs are unusable or wasted, and that's a pretty big problem. That's where Transmedics comes in. It created the Organ Care System, which is a medical device system that allows in-transit organs to function normally outside of a human body. The organs are alive, not frozen for preservation. That means that 8 to 9 out of every 10 thoracic organs can be used to save lives, leading to higher organ utilization rates and even lower post-transplant complication risks. Currently, Transmedics offers three types of organ care systems, lung, heart, and liver. Meanwhile, they're developing a fourth called the kidney organ care system. It's also worth noting that Transmedics is the only company with FDA-approved technology for heart, liver, and lung transplantation. The company's growth trajectory is set to continue as it bolsters sales and expands its product line. Revenue consistently grew at a fair CAGR of 21% over the last four years. It's also storing a total $100 million in cash against debts of roughly $50 million. The only problem is its stock is a little too expensive, with Transmatic's EBITDA and free cash flow being still negative over those last four years. I do think the company will continue to grow as it offers a critically needed service, but that stock price might be a little too high right now. The last company of the three is, in my opinion, the most interesting. I've even talked in length about it before, I even own it. It's bed, bath, 
Earth and beyond. I won't go into great detail here about BBBY's history, but give you a brief overview. Over the last 10 years, Bed Bath & Beyond went from one of the fastest growing retailers to one of the least respected retailers because of its terrible management and even worse prior CEO, Stephen Tamaras. However, in 2019, three activist investors stepped in and replaced Tamaras with Mark Tritton, a retail veteran boasting Nike, Nordstrom, and Target on his resume. But the pandemic hit in 2020, nearly derailing Tritton's turnaround plan. He rose to the occasion by selling off non-core assets, launching new product lines, and increasing online sales by over 100%. Tritton also has tremendously increased shareholder value through stock buybacks, buying up nearly 50% of the company's outstanding shares. Under his leadership, Bed Bath & Beyond consistently improved same-source sales growth and widened margins. Plus, in its most recent earnings call, the company announced that it added over 500 million new subscribers to its Beyond Plus service. All this, along with the decluttering of stores and supply chain reorganization, makes Bed Bath & Beyond perhaps one of the most interesting turnaround stories since Best Buy. Check out the pinned comment down below for the link to the video where I talk about Bed Bath & Beyond's turnaround plan, financials, and success a little bit more. And if you're interested in finding more incredible companies, click on the video showing up on screen about now to learn what my top companies for 2022 are. With that said, I'll leave you here. I'll see you all in the next episode of Dollars and Cents.